Welcome back to Interplay Learning. This is Frank, and we are going to continue our lesson on leak check and evacuation. Jacques Charles is one of my favorite scientists, and he discovered this law that states that the volume of a fixed amount of gas, and we have a fixed amount of gas when we pressurize the system, and when that gas is at a constant pressure, it's directly proportional to its absolute temperature. And what he means when he says that is when the temperature of that gas increases, that the pressure increases. When the temperature decreases, the pressure decreases. So here's a way that we could be fooled by changes in temperature that cause a change in pressure. And here's a little illustration of what that might look like. So when we see the temperature go up, the pressure gauge goes up. And when the temperature goes down, the pressure goes down. So we're looking for the gauge to not move and be in the same position. But what this is telling us is that a fixed amount of gas is going to change when the temperature of that environment that it's in changes. Here's an example of how you could be fooled by this. We leave a system overnight. We begin our pressure test at 4 o'clock and it's 95 degrees outside. We test our R22 system at 150 PSIG. We come back the next morning, it's only 75 degrees out. The system is subject to a lower ambient temperature. And we look at our gauge and our gauge says, oh, we lost six pounds of pressure. We must have a leak. This is not an example of a leak. And there's some math that we can do to tell us how all that works. I'm just going to quickly run through this. We're going to have a supplemental exercise for you to practice this calculation. but. Here's uh, what Charles' law states, P1 divided by T1 equals P2 divided by T2, and the P means pressure and the T means temperature. P1 and T1 are the pressure and temperature that we have at one point in time, and then P2 and T2 are the pressure and temperature that we have at another point in time. And the calculation gets a little bit tricky because we have to use absolute pressures and we have to use rank and temperatures. So, Converting to absolute pressures and rank and temperatures is a challenge enough for some of us to do, let alone doing the algebra that is required to do this calculation. Question would be, can we actually compute what the pressure is going to end up at when we start off at 150 PSIG at 95 degrees? What should our pressure be when it's only 75 degrees? Here is the calculation once you convert the initial pressures and temperatures to absolute pressure and Rankine. And the thing that we don't know is the pressure that we have on the system the next morning. We do know the temperature is 75 degrees in the morning or converted to 535 degrees Rankine. And we solve for P2, which is the pressure that we have the next morning. And once you do the math on that, it comes out to 144 PSIG. So what this is saying is that we didn't lose an ounce of nitrogen in the system. The only reason that the pressure went down was because the temperature went down. Any pressure below 144 PSIG would mean there's a leak. Here's a diagram of a refrigeration system, and we've looked at just about all these different components, except for that sight glass down on the bottom. We haven't talked about that yet. But we have our gauges hooked up to it with the red hose going to the high side and the blue hose going to the low side. And then this is a three port manifold, and we've got that extra hose in the middle that's our charging hose. We have a nitrogen cylinder and we have a regulator on that cylinder. We're gonna connect our charging hose, which is typically a yellow hose, to our regulator. And if this was an R22 system, we're gonna set our regulator for just over 150 PSIG, and we're gonna open the tank, and we're gonna open the valves on the gauges, and you could see how it just filled up the system with nitrogen. So we're gonna dial it in at exactly 150 PSIG and stop. We're going to close both of those gauges on the red and blue, and we're going to turn off the pressure on the tank. We don't want any leaks in our gauge manifold to throw off our pressures. We don't really have to do step number six, mark the exact gauge pressure, because we're going to use the exact same pressure every time. And the system is ready to go. So now it's time to go to lunch. Whenever I'm doing an install, I try to get it up to this point by lunchtime. 
I go to lunch, I come back, I look for my 150 PSIG on my gauges. If it's still there at 150, I'm good to go. If it's not, it's time to look for a leak. So let's take a break and I'll see you on the next one.